One of the things I'm always telling people is that when you're communicating with others about something that's not just dry, factual, straightforward information, you need to move away from written text and speak it in a way where you can have the full benefit of the nonverbal parts of communication so that the person on the other end of your communication conversation has a better chance to understand what you meant and how you intended that communication, whereas they do when they're just reading it in an email or worse, in a text message. So I've written about this elsewhere and I'll link to it below, but I did want to give you a story about something that happened to me that helped me realize that not only is it really important to be face to face when you're having conversations that might have any kind of a disagreement, a potential for misunderstanding, or any kind of an emotional tone where you want to make sure that you're building the relationship and preventing anything from detracting from that connection. But even then, communication is really hard and it's not foolproof. Uh, when I was a, a very brand new manager for a financial services company, a woman that had come on to my team had a very different educational background from me and had a specialized knowledge of a certain field that I didn't have a lot of specialized knowledge in, which was why we brought her onto the team and I was her manager. She and I didn't always communicate very easily and I think that we had a lot of misunderstandings, but I certainly always valued her professional expertise and I tried to understand and listen to it. One time we were talking about something she had created. I don't remember if it was something she wrote or something she was presenting to me. And I was listening and really trying to understand her. And she said something to me that shocked me at the moment. It actually felt like she was stabbing me through the heart with a knife. But later I was very thankful that she had taken the time to tell me this. She said, you're always judging me. And I looked at her really bewildered. Well, what do you mean I'm always judging you? I don't understand. She said, Every time I'm talking to you, you always have that scrunched brow that makes me feel like you're judging me, like you think I'm stupid or you think what I'm saying is wrong. Oh my gosh, I was so surprised by this because I have to tell you, it is possible that there had been communications where that was true, where she said something I may have disagreed with, and it is possible that I uh, furrowed my brow in disagreement. But I can guarantee you that during that moment where she said, you're judging me, I really was just listening and trying to understand her. So as I was reflecting on what made her think this, I figured that I probably have a I'm listening very carefully kind of face. Like I'm, I'm thinking hard about what you're saying. I'm really, really focusing. And that face that I'm kind of making right now has my brows uh, scrunched up like that. That also could be misconstrued as I'm judging you or I'm disapproving of what you're saying. So it wasn't my intention, but it was how it was received. And in communication, your intention is fine, but it really isn't the most important thing because unless you can convey your intention successfully to the other person, then the communication has failed. And in this case, clearly, the communication has failed. And it wasn't something I said, but it was something that she read. And she misread me, but it landed for her in a way that made her feel very uncomfortable with me and created some conflict between us. I'm thankful to her that she said this to me because a lot of times people will feel this but won't say it. And she gave me that feedback. A lot of people are afraid to give their manager feedback and so that was a gift. She gave it to me. I had to get over my hurt feelings to think about it clearly but thankfully after that I recognized that I need to be very aware of not sending an unintended message in my nonverbal communication. So from there on, I had to try to really focus on relaxing my forehead muscles, at least when I'm speaking with her, but in general, being more aware of what's my face saying, what's my body saying, and how might this be received in a way that doesn't align with the message I'm intending to send. So for one, recognize that information that is sent with no nonverbal information has a lot higher chances of being misinterpreted. So for example, if you sent an email that said, good job, those are just seven letters, two words, but it could mean two very different things or more. So for example, did you mean good job? Or did you mean good job? See how my nonverbal communication can really change the meaning of those two words to be something very different. One is very approving and celebratory, and one is very cynical and maybe sarcastic. Communication with people with whom you want to have a positive relationship is really important. 
And there is so many opportunities for misunderstanding that at least try to keep the nonverbal together with the verbal. But even if you do, remember, it's not enough because you still might be misunderstood and therefore be open to feedback, seek feedback actively, and act on that feedback to constantly try to improve your communication success. I'm Halali Azulai with Talent Grow and host of The Talent Grow Show. And I hope that you've enjoyed this short vlog. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below or on my webpage if you're viewing this on YouTube. And until the next time, make today great.